In this video, we're returning to the topic of finding electric fields. When we first had looked at chapter 23, we had gone through and we had learned how to find electric fields of point charges. Now that everyone has seen the required calculus, we can go through and learn how to use calculus to find electric fields due to continuous charge distributions. A couple of quick reminders. Electric field lines either start on positive charges or at infinity. The field lines stop on negative charges or they go off to infinity. More charge is represented by more field lines. You have more field lines coming from the charge. You know, the number of field lines coming from the charge represents how much charge is there. The field line spacing indicates the field strength. So if they're more densely packed together, that's a stronger electric field. If they're more spread apart, that's a weaker electric field. And again, electric field lines never cross. That means at that point where they would cross, you're saying that the electric field is pointing in two different directions. You're saying that if you put a positive charge there, it feels a force in one direction, but it also feels a force in a different direction. So you're not saying that it's those two added together. You're saying that the direction of the force is in two separate directions, which it can't be. It's either in one direction or it's in another direction. <clears throat> when you're calculating the electric field of a continuously charged object, you're going to set up a coordinate system and then you look for any electric fields that might cancel each other out, that might make the setup a lot more easy. And then you're going to break the object up into a bunch of point-like elements. This is going to allow you to do something very similar to what we did for point charges. Um, each point-like element has a charge dq, so you're looking at an infinite number of little point charges dq, and you're going to add up the electric field contributions of each one. So you write down Coulomb's law for each individual point-like element. So Coulomb's law for electric fields is k dq over r squared is the electric field. So the contribution for each little piece again is k dq over r squared. And you're going to integrate all of the electric field pieces to find the total electric field. So in this example, we're looking for the electric field due to a line of charge. So again, the first step is to break this up into little pieces dq. And you look at the distance r from the charge. But we need to set up a coordinate system. So I'm going to let x equal 0 at this right end of the rod. And then x is going to be my distance from that right end of the rod. So this distance from this piece dq to point p is x plus a. And so I'm going to have a piece down here that is at a position, a distance a from point p. I'm going to have a piece down here that's at a position l plus a, since this rod has a length l. This is at a position x equals l. This, we're going to have to write in term, we're going to, have to look at this in terms of the charge density, the linear charge density. The linear charge density is the charge per unit length. The symbol that's given for it is the Greek letter lambda, standing for L, reminding you that it's the charge per length. And in this case, the charge per length is the total charge Q over the total length L. So we break this up into pieces dQ. The next step is to write down the electric field due to one of those pieces. So dE, which is the electric field due to just that piece that I'm looking at that's drawn in the picture, is going to be k times the charge dq divided by the distance squared. And the distance is x plus a. My total electric field is going to add up all of the individual de pieces. 
So it's going to be the integral of k dq over x plus a squared. So this should have been squared up here. We have a problem with the integral, though, because x is the variable that is changing. x is going to need to go from 0 to l. But my integral is set up in terms of dq. And so we can't do that integral the way it is. We need to be able to write dq in terms of x, which is why we came up with the linear charge density. The charge dq on this segment is its width dx times the charge per length. Again, if you, had, if you knew that there were 5 coulombs per meter and you knew that you had a half of a meter, then you know that you have 0.5 you know, meters times 5 coulombs per meter. That would let you know that you have 2.5 coulombs of charge. So here, the charge on this little piece is the charge per length lambda times dx, the width of that segment. So this allows me to write this as the integral of k times lambda times dx over the quantity x plus a squared. And the k and the lambdas are constants. So we can bring them out in front of the integral. And we're going to integrate from x equals 0 to x equals l. And it's the integral of dx over the quantity x plus a squared. To do this integral, you use a u substitution. You let u equal x plus a. du is just dx. So that integral becomes du over u squared. And the integral of du over u squared is negative 1 over u. If I make the substitution, if I plug in back for u, I get that the electric field is k lambda times the quantity negative 1 over u, but u was x plus a, evaluated from x equals 0 to x equals capital L. So this gives me k lambda times the quantity negative 1 over capital L plus A minus the quantity negative 1 over A when you plug in x equals 0. Or if we substitute in for lambda, if we put in Q over L, we get that this is K times the quantity Q over L. And then because we have a negative times a negative, and that becomes positive. It's more common to write the positive term first. So this is 1 over A minus 1 over the quantity capital L plus A. On the AP test, any form that you have would be, any of these last two forms would be correct. The only caution is if the question says specifically, write the answer in terms of K, Q, L, and any un other given quantities. Another given quantity would be A. You could not leave it in terms of lambda. You would need to substitute in that the charge per length is capital Q over L. That would be a minor thing. You would lose a point for not making that substitution back at the end. Um, but that is something to be careful on. But other than that, you do not need to simplify things down. Um, just make sure that you have all of the variables
taken care of, you're putting it in the correct variables.